That's Otto and Rora. Oh, look, he just curled up with Uncle Cyrus. She's so cute. Oh, man, I actually need a picture because that's so cute. She's so cute. <laughs> I'm sure Cyrus would agree. She's so cute. Do you need your Uncle Cyrus to wake up and clean with you? Are you going to bite his giant ears? It really isn't fair to have, to not be able to attack your friend Cyrus when he has such big ears. Such big ears. Hi Katie, good. how are you? Oh, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Pip is very focused. Such a beautiful Izzy. Oh, look. Glad you're having some bath time. Uh, so I am thinking about um, yeah, so I am I am looking at the keeping track of who's pregnant and stuff at the colony. Uh, so that when it's time to bring in someone else, I will know who is, um, oh, no. who is the good candidate and, uh, we'll see who we end up with. I am, uh, going to try to trap Inara again and probably take her to laps. Because I can't take anyone just yet. Because there's too much going on here. <laughs> With nine kittens and one Eve. And Eve's enjoying having the room of the entire apartment. So, And so are these kittens half the time. Are you going to get that? So, let's see. So, as far as pregnant foster candidates, um, right now there are five pregnant cats that we know of. Uh, Inara, Neelix, Nova, Corin, and Sigma. And I think I can hopefully get Inara this week maybe. And I think Laps will have space for her then. That would be good. I don't know if I can, but I'm going to try. And Neelix is going to be tricky. Um, we trapped Neelix about a month ago uh, after she had her first litter this year and she was producing milk and so we had to let her go so that we didn't uh, leave her babies defenseless for 
two days. Um, so it will be interesting to see if she is able to be trapped again. She's very skittish. So uh, I don't know how that would affect her stress level in captivity, if there's a correlation between how skittish they are and how well they will do in foster care. Um, Inara is like the opposite. She's very aggressive with other cats. So I suspect she would do better in foster care because she seems tougher. However, the downside to that is that uh, whoever's taking care of her is going to have greater risk. Um, Laps has a better setup uh, in that regard because the the condos where they keep them, there are two and they're separated by just a little portal so they can sort of herd the mom into the one side and close it off and then do what they need to do with the babies. Whereas I don't really have any way to do that here. So if mama is protective or aggressive here, I wouldn't be able to do anything. Uh, like if the babies needed help or anything, I'd have to suit up and I don't know what I would do. It would be challenging. So, um, yes, even the boys, uh, will definitely come back here. They'll all be here until adoption day. Who's out there scampering around to someone? Izzy? No. Rory. I think it must be Rory. Whoa! Are you trying to escape and you tipped over? Into a pile of forest seedlings? Oh, Rory's attacking Eve right now. That's pretty adorable. Get her! <laughs> Hi, Jeannie. How are you? Hi, Otto. Oh, you're so handsome. So handsome. Um, how do the forest kitties survive when it gets cold in winter? Um, it's definitely harder on them, because especially because it rains so much here. Um, but they do have lots of good shelter, and um, we we will provide more if they'll use it. Um, they're not currently using any of the options we have already provided, but. Uh, probably because they don't need them now. Um, and we will be feeding them, so they'll at least have access to food um, more than they have had in the past. So that's good. So let's see. So yeah, I'm trying to uh, get Quark um, before she gets pregnant again. You're very cute. She is proving uh, quite clever. Um, so I wanted to not have to like trap her in the drop trap because it's more stressful. But if I have to, that's what I'll do. Because she will get over it eventually. I just will be sad to see her in the trap. It's stressed out, my little quirkles. Yes. Ooh, so cute. Um, yes, it is always hard to see them go. Uh, Doe got adopted to a wonderful, wonderful home. Um, her adopter has worked with semi-feral cats before and uh, was willing to adopt her basically just based off of hearing about her on the camp, which is so awesome because um, that's basically what we were hoping for um, because we knew if someone went in to, to see her, she's not going to come out. You're not going to get a good sense for what her real personality is like because she's so stressed. So it takes someone who is willing to put in the time and the effort and the patience to basically, you know, slowly earn her trust and make her comfortable. So she has a Facebook page. It's called Doe, a cat, an adopted cat. It's really cute. Um, 
super happy about that because we were all kind of dreading, um, you know, having to make a decision at some point that she's just so stressed at the shelter, she could at least go back to the forest and, you know, it wouldn't be the best, the, the ideal outcome that we would want for her, but it would at least be better than her, you know, being terrified and stressed at the shelter all the time. So, um, yeah, so I'm super grateful that someone stepped up um, and is now she's going to have a chance to be loved and safe and all the things that we want for all of them. <laughs> I'm not going to sing you the title. <laughs> but there's a link on Tiny Kitten's uh, page, uh, Facebook page. Um, yeah, so I am open to adopting, to mixing the pairs. Um, the forest kittens won't be available for another couple of weeks though. Um, I think ideally they would go with each other because I wouldn't want to split them up for a couple of weeks and then have to reintroduce them. So the logistics there would get a little complicated. Um, look at you, so cute. <laughs> and I think they, I think like a Junie Badger pairing would be adorable and a Cricket Cated pairing would be adorable. Yes. But we'll see, we'll see a lot of it has to do with who applies for which pairs and all that stuff. So we'll just see. You are so cute. Aren't you just so cute? Do you want some water? Like a big girl? Oh, Mia is Doe's human. Thank you, Mia. That's awesome. And thank you for making a Facebook page. We were all so worried about her. And so it's great that someone who understands her and loved her, be you loved her before you even met her, which is so great. So um, that's awesome. That gives us hope for next time we find a semi-feral cat. You know, maybe we'll be able to find someone because initially Laps was going to return her. And I was like, I was like, no, just, can we just try to find a home? And they're always thinking about, you know, how stressed she is at the shelter and they don't want to put her through that. Um, but I'm glad it worked out. Lots of tough calls that we have to make all the time. That's very awesome. You're just so cute. I almost always send them home in pairs. Almost always. Except sometimes when there's an odd number. But uh, I definitely encourage and prioritize applications for pairs of kittens because it's so much nicer for them. And it's so much nicer for their humans because um, you can take pictures of adorable snuggling kittens and make all your friends on Facebook jealous. Yes. Yep, Abby was a, Abby was a, when there's an odd number, uh, sometimes then, because we do get lots of really exceptional single kitten applications, um, and they don't often get matched just because we also get lots of really good, um, pair applications, but, um, so we'll see, we'll see how things shake out. I think an Eve Aurora pairing might be super adorable because they're like, <laughs> they're pretty cute together. Uh, huh, huh, huh. I don't 
don't mind questions. Questions are good. Right, Tini? Oh, you're so cute. Mm. What else? Oh, so I was talking about the pregnant feral foster candidates. So Inara is aggressive. Uh, Neelix is super shy. Nova, I think, is a pretty good candidate because she is sort of confident. Um, she's sort of like progressing to the point where Sloane was, uh, except that she was trapped. I trapped her on Thursday. No, we don't nurse back there. That's how we get worms. Um, except that I trapped her and she's not pregnant enough to go into foster care, uh, but too pregnant to be spayed. So, uh, I'm hoping that that doesn't scare her off because she was just starting to come more regularly uh, and she was not there yesterday, but, um, hopefully she will come back. Um, so Nova's a good candidate. Uh, Quarren is also super skittish and has just started coming around a bit more regularly. Um, so I think she would be difficult to trap. Um, I feel like she's related to Quark somehow. I get the impression she's older based on no scientific evidence. Um, and the other one is Sigma. Sigma is also fairly timid, but will come eat while I'm there. Um, so of those, It's hard to say if I could take two at the same time. Definitely not Inara and another cat because she's too aggressive. But I am curious how, because remember the Great Sloney experiment was supposed to be the Great Sloney and Quarkle's experiment, but Quark went and had her babies early. And so uh, that didn't end up happening. cute. <sighs> because I think, so I think that they are pretty social with each other and they're used to having other cats around. So I am curious whether if we took two in that were due around the same time and they were able to stay together, if they would be comforted by each other and if that would be, uh, if that would help um, with a positive outcome. It's also very high risk because if we release two cats and they don't like each other or they don't want to be together, then it's going to be really difficult to separate them. So, so we'll just see. Um, there have been, uh, some, there have been some applications for these guys. Um, but Definitely not as many as previous litters, um, which is good. I think it means that people are adopting the other lapsed kittens uh, as they become available. Um, many of those litters of kittens have been adopted before they've even been available, which is a totally new experience um, for the non-kitten cam kittens. Um, but it's good because we had so many kittens. Um, they all need homes, but there definitely are fewer applications for these guys. Yeah, two of them could could gang up on me and defeat the pizza box shield. I don't think that would be hard. <laughs> um, Laps is not as stringent about the uh, pair adoptions as I am. So if you are looking for a single cat or a single cat or kitten, um, they they um, don't hesitate to do single single kitten adoptions. Um, I like them to go in pairs. <laughs> 
but in, there are plenty of situations where it's totally fine to, to adopt just a single kitten. Like Shirabi has Big Brother Merlot and they love each other and Aster got adopted by himself and totally loved it. Anyway, um, someone asked about Caprice. Uh, I'm not sure if the question was about fostering her with another cat, but uh, Caprice is spayed, so she's going to stay in the forest. I know I do need a Kevlar suit. If any of you saw the intake exams, they're pretty, um, like the really aggressive cats are pretty terrifying. Did you get to that Katie? Oh, it's so cute. She's so adorable. <laughs> um, what else? <laughs> it is super hard to say goodbye to the fosters, of course. Always difficult, but it makes it a lot easier when they have Facebook pages and you can follow along and you know they're going to be loved and cared for. It was really hard to give them up when they just, just you take them to the shelter and then you don't know what happens to them after that. That's really hard because you always worry about them. But this way, um, this way, we know that someone loves and values them. Yeah, and I do get to visit sometimes, or they get, or they visit me. Uh, Caprice is actually pretty assertive with the other cats. Um, like if she wants the food bowl that they're eating, she'll go up and whap them, and she'll move in for sure. She's she's pretty assertive. Um, yeah, I definitely have allergies. Um, you just kind of have to suck it up <laughs> and take medicine if it helps. I don't know. Allergy shots, maybe. Mm. Um, I have not seen any kittens around the colony. I'm kind of surprised about that, but um, yeah. No kittens and the moms are starting to get pregnant again, so. Yeah, Cricket was totally harassing Cyrus and then she fell asleep with him. She was being a big pain, but a, a big, a little sister and a bratty little sister. Mm -hmm. Oh, where are the kittens of the colony? Um, well, we have rescued 19 from the other side where we don't have access, um, where we think most of them are being born because they have shelter there. They have barns and things. Um, and the property owner is finding them and then he's uh, letting us, uh, he's bringing them to me so that I can take them in. Um, but they all, have all had ringworm, the ones that he's brought in that have been born there. Um, and all the ISOs are full at laps, so we can't take any more ringworm kittens in because we can't put them into foster care because they're so contagious. Um, and um, the kittens, like Quark's kittens, Inara's first litter, um, I'm pretty sure that Quark's first litter did not survive. I'm pretty sure Inara's first litter did not survive uh, because Inara is pregnant way too soon. Um, and so usually that means that uh, something happened to the whole litter, like a predator or one of the tomcats uh, came through and killed them or disease or something happened. So 
it's definitely been hard for us um, to see that happening um, and not to be able to do anything about it. So that's why we're trying really hard to get the get them either before they get pregnant or be able to foster them. So yeah, so we think of that probably most of the ones have, that have been born have not survived. Um, at least from the moms on our side. But there is statistically like um, a 75% mortality rate on kittens born in the wild. So uh, it's sort of something we knew going into it, but it doesn't make it any easier, but it's um, definitely difficult at times. Um, Otto, Pip, and Cyrus are getting neutered on Tuesday, and Eve's getting spayed on Wednesday, and they will all be coming back here. So Eve will be, we'll see how she does. She's been pretty good about um, not nursing them. Oh, there she is right now. She's been pretty good, so I think her milk supply is quite a bit better than all of my other mama cats have been. Um... I do have um, an anti-nursing, a new anti-nursing device that was sent. Uh, so we'll see how that does. Mm. Badger is definitely getting more handsome every day. Hi, Miss Ink. Um, Uh, we are still in the design phase of the isoasis, uh, but hoping to have it done sometime next summer during next, so we can use it for next kitten season. It takes so long to do this stuff. It's, I'm super impatient, so I want it now. I want it like three months ago, but, uh, it just, you know. I wish I could make it appear, but I can't. Um, after the spay, I will put the shirt on her or I will uh, separate them and do supervised visits. No, they uh, will have one adoption day for Eve's, Eve in the palindrome, so we'll wait till the girls get... The girls are scheduled for... The following week, uh, I don't know, maybe I can see on here what day. Uh, July 2nd, so Thursday. So it'll probably be sometime that weekend will be adoption day. Um, yeah, it's a bit tricky, but we'll, tr we'll work it out somehow. And then the little ones will stay. Oh, look at Cyrus. Look at his little belly. Oh, Cyrus is awake. Nope, going back in. Oh, he's such a big boy. How about some of this? What's some of this action here? It's pretty adorable. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, I know um, the spay date is not showing up properly for Slomi. It's in the database, right? It's just, there's, I have to do some coding and I haven't had time yet. So that is not showing up right. And um, the M number is just data entry problem because I was probably in a rush. Um, the, the, the forest kittens don't need any, don't need bottle feeding. I, uh, 
Yeah, they they are eating solid food now, so um, they will not need bottle feeding. Usually they don't want the bottle at this age anyway. Um, I don't, I don't know if I'll stream adoption day. It's a lot of extra logistics, but maybe I will. And if the girls stream is on that day, maybe we'll, we'll stream it on there. So I don't have to like bring all my equipment and stuff. Um, Tuxie portrait would be adorable. Oh, some of the things I've learned and the things I will do differently with my next feral foster. Um, yes, Lightning McQueen did get adopted. And so did his mom, Molly, which is great. Um, well, you can go to tinykittens.com slash ferals slash fostering and see the whole write-up of the Great Saloni experiment. Um, it went really, really well. Gets the game knotted at the end of... Um... I think nest setup would be different next time around um, to try to give uh, different options. But again, that could be just an individual cat preference thing, um, but uh, different sort of nest configurations. Um, the litter boxes, I think I, I have a good idea of what um, to do with litter boxes. Uh, so I won't need to do all the different options. Um, there's another fly in here. Um, I think it would be cool to try doing two at once if I could, if I had two that I was pretty confident would get along. Yeah, fewer slugs would be good for sure. Um, I think a lot of this stuff, though, worked really well. Uh, so, a lot of the stuff I would do the same. Um, I think the white noise machine, in addition to the forest noises, was good. I didn't start the white noise machine for like, I don't know, a week or two. And it would be nice to have a another Eve for when mom gets spayed and goes back. Because um, that was really helpful. So we'll just have to see how it goes. <laughs> and it will, it will depend a lot on the mom because I suspect each one will have her own preferences. And so I won't really be able to predict what will be the most successful. I'll have to wait and see how she reacts to captivity. Um, that's a good question. Any chance that TNR will have to be stopped for lack of funds? Uh, we have had to take a break for because of lack of capacity. Um, and we didn't get the grant we applied for. Um, so we definitely will need more. Um, we definitely will need more money to continue for sure. Um, we have a little bit that people have donated. Um, so we'll just keep going as long as we can. Um, it costs us a, a little over a hundred dollars per cat just to do the basic stuff. Um, but we end up having, well, the ringworm, 
adds a huge amount of expense because every cat we every kitten we take in with ringworm requires five weeks of treatment time minimum plus three tests that are like fifty dollars each so it's extra 150 per cat plus spays and neuters and vaccines and all that stuff so that's super expensive um that's why a lot of shelters just immediately euthanize ringworm kittens but we don't do that um so yeah it uh has gotten super expensive and then you have stuff like eyeball removals and um, we had to do an ultrasound on one of the kittens with a heart murmur um, and, you know, stuff like that. So you can uh, donate directly to LAPS to their spay neuter fund uh, or you can donate to tiny kittens um, for like that will go directly to the project. Um, expenses and um, like extra extra medical stuff like ultrasounds and things like that that come up um, so that we because uh, it's easier for us to allocate money to those the bigger expenses than it is for laps to do that because they have such a big like they have so many animals that they're caring for that um, they have to be really really uh, they have a you know a plan and a budget and all that stuff that they have to follow to make sure that they're caring for all the animals um so it's nice to be able to uh help out with that stuff when we when it comes up so um thank you to all of you guys who have donated because you have made lots of things possible like vet exams and ultrasounds and things like that so um yeah so yeah, you can go to tinykittens.com slash donate. Um, or uh, Bobby's TNR fund. Uh, or uh, lapsbc.ca slash donate. Flaps one. So, but thank you guys for all of your support because we can do all the labor stuff, but it's been, I think we're over $13,000 so far. And uh, I do need to update. I don't have all the kittens in yet that have gotten adopted. So it says one adoption and that's Doe, but we've had, I know all of Shelby's kittens have been adopted. So that's six more and uh, a bunch more are gonna be available in the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, we're over $13,000 and that's because of spades and neuters and ringworm and ultrasounds and uh, vet exams and food has been super expensive and equipment like cameras and traps and things like that. Um, it's amazing how much, how much, uh, how quickly it adds up. Uh... Or you can, uh, so tinykittens.com slash donate has all the options. Like you can PayPal or you can send a check or whatever you want to do. Um, so, and thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, I think, yeah. Why oh, is it sleeping? And on that note, look, I've bored everyone to sleep. I've bored everybody except the big. Kittens seem to have abandoned us. I love them. Let's see. Let's round up some kittens. And then, oh, I've got some things. Oh, there's Miss Kitty right there. She's so beautiful. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Here's some.
some more tuxy, a little more tuxy action. Um, let's put this maybe over here. Oops, no, I can't see. <laughs> Lovely carpet view. Or we could do a fish bed view, but then it's going to be empty sometimes. This can go. Put the cheese over here. Oh, I think my battery just died. Oh. Look at Pip Palindrome belly. Maybe what we need to do with uh, this one is a little something like this. Okay, I think that's pretty good. All right, everybody, have fun with kittens. Thanks for watching. Run out of sleep. Why don't you go snuggle with your little friends? <laughs>